I'm thankful again and would like to welcome everyone to Reaping the Harvest Community Church, the YouTube subscriber and watchers. Good morning and pray that the Lord will just speak to all of us clearly this morning as we are continuing in the second book of Corinthians. Uh, again, you know, the fact that God is speaking. One of the things that as we was preparing through songs and worship this morning, you know, uh, God just reminded me. And when we are talking about our Father, the, our, our Master, our Lord, and then we were talking about the Holy Spirit, I don't ever want to come across that God speaks to me only and I have this special relationship with God. God is no respect of person. And God is so big that He loves all of us the same. He doesn't love one more than the other. Those that remains in Him and that are faithful to Him is pleasing to God's sight. You know, when we hear that He looks on the good and the evil, and His wrath is against uh, wickedness and evil, because God loves, God holds back because He constantly gets praise from the cherubim and the seraphim that's constantly giving Him praise. Can you imagine if God did not have praise? We would have no mercy. See, see, when we understand mercy and grace, we talk about mercy and grace, but we cannot leave out. That mercy and grace come from Him being praised at all times. You see our limitedness of how God has created us, where the angels, God is in His, his wisdom, his wisdom now. He know that if he get praise at all time, he moves. Mm -hmm. See, God moves off faith, but he also moves off praise. Mm -hmm. It pleases him. See, the faithfulness that Adam and Eve was doing in the garden before the fall, it pleased him because he would come down. Now, he's watching them, but God will come to talk to them in the cool of the evening to see how their day went, to that communion and fellowship. See, when God gave Adam the charge and brought the animal, what Adam, whatever Adam named them, that's what they went by. Now, who gave Adam the mind to even name them? See that oneness and likeness? We cannot deviate what God has created. We are his crown creation, and we're in his image and his likeness. The enemy is still messing with us and when we don't see that then we get to ourselves and when we get to ourselves you're headed for a fall mm -hmm. because you're going to be limited on what you know yeah it may work for a short time yeah you may get some people to follow but now when you become a disciple and you are in the word and you're reading the word and God starts to speak, well, wait a minute, that don't sound right. And then when you're questioned about truth, now you have to justify instead of being just, instead of being your justification remaining in the word, now you justify your own thoughts and ways. Mm. And these are the things where God continued to show us, look, man is here because of me. And when I'm saying man is here because of me, Man, woman, boy, girl. We have to get out of our mind when God is saying man as if he's just talking about the man. Man is the seed. No child can be produced unless you have a man. That's why man was created first. It does not make him better than a woman because the woman was in man. Amen. So for that reason, when God planted him in the garden, she was already there. She just wasn't manifest yet. God had manifest her. Adam just didn't know it. That's why it came when he saw the pair. Why did God say in the first chapter, God created them male and female, mm -hmm. created he, him, them? Now, if that's the case, when Adam felt lonely, it wasn't that Adam didn't feel lonely. Adam knew he had to help me. She just wasn't present for him to say, you're going to be called a woman. 
But when God brought her and bringing her is, he already recognized. He said, born my bone. Wait a minute. He was asleep. Yeah. God took the rib. And when God took that rib now, God just setting us up for the message. This ain't the message, but he's setting us up for it. So when he took that rib and he brought Eve to Adam, Adam woke up and did what God already told him to do when he named those animals. God already put it in his head, put it in his heart. That's why he said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Now, wait a minute. How in the world did Adam recognize Eve? He already knew her. So the fact that he already knew her, and God know us this way, but we are still denying the faith of what we've obtained from God. We still trying to put our own stuff with God, and it's just not going to work. This is a challenge that Paul is having. See, the one thing that we don't want to do, and the one thing we have to get out of, especially those of us who remain, you know your lifestyle. You know what God has brought you from and where he's taking you. If you remain, it's when you don't remain. It's when you let those naysayers, those detractors, like the Sam Ballas and, and Tobias on Nehemiah, with Nehemiah on the wall. When you start hearing all these voices and it's not lining up with the truth and you listen to the voices now, but not the voice, mm -hmm. that's when you're distracted. Yeah. That when the word of God go forth, you're, oh, you hear it, and you'll say, amen, hallelujah, powerful word. But right after the service, you go back to business, you do. Well, wait a minute. This reminds me of one thing of the cartoon, Bugs Bunny, the, the coyote and the, the, the hen. Now, no, the sheepdog. Now, that sheepdog had to watch those sheep. Now, they walk in, they're hand in hand, buddies. What's going on, Fred? What's going on, Sam? Walking in. Clock in. When they clock in, the coyote go like this, red faction, and the sheepdog go stand in the post. Now every time he tried to plot to get one of those sheep, sheepdog right there. Now guess what? Satan is. This is his world, but God has destroyed it. It's already done. We just got to see the manifestation of it. But we're not looking at ourselves like that way. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. See, if we remain in the world to come, then we can catch the naysayers. We can catch the distraction. We can catch this false teaching. But if we're not paying attention to that, these are the things that God continued to warn us. And he's like, well, wait a minute, Pastor. You're already hyping. Uh, no. This is an alert call. Don't you understand? Jesus, John the Baptist, all the prophets and brethren before us, they reside in heaven. We're left with this. There's not going to ever be another. Jesus already said it. There'll never be another man greater than John the Baptist. That was for John. Guess what? The Father loved you so much. Now that you're in him, now that you're in him, your name is written. And because your name is written, there is an assignment of work for you to do. You do not have time to waste. If, we, if I'm thinking about time, it's going to limit me on what I need to do with God. Do and submit to his will. Because if I'm looking at time, I say, well, I got tomorrow. Well, James already told us, tomorrow's not promised to you. Don't, don't, don't. Look at that. But if I shall live, I should do this this day. See, we we're, saying all, we're saying all the right things, but our words is not lining up with who we are. I'm not talking about our shortcomings. Because again now, church, again, those of you are out there, your justification is from the word. Just shall live by faith. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Your process is your sins has been purged. That is your, pers that is your regeneration. God has purchased you. With the price, your sins are forgiven. Your sanctification is your process. You are going through this world where you are going to suffer for the kingdom of God. You have an adversary that wants to trip you up. He, Satan cannot reveal himself until his time. We already know this. And the one thing 
that I really have to say, getting ready to go into this message. Please, 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 two things. Get your notebooks, write everything down, go back, and you, if you're not going to listen to what I'm about to tell you, whatever you write down, go to the Lord in prayer and tell him to reveal it to you. Let him do it. Yeah. If, you, if, if you want to look at me this way and say, well, he's saying this. I'm going to give you scriptures now. Because the only way I can tell you is that he has shared it with me. Now, sharing it with me is I'm all in. I'm standing here before you because of God. I'm not standing here because I chose to do this. He chose me before the foundation of the world. We was predestined, amen? So the one thing that we have got to be careful of, when it comes to the kingdom of God, we have got to see when God is moving on someone's life. Don't be naysayers. Don't you understand? This stuff has been going on since sin entered the world. It happened to Christ, and it's going to happen. Why do you think I'm not worried? Yes, relationship may have changed. Yes, you may seem like you're by yourself. Hold up. Hold up. If I am in Christ, and I'm in the kingdom, how am I alone? Amen. The path that you are on is you and him. God is going to connect you with people that's like-minded and wanting and serving him. You don't want to leave nobody behind. He don't want to leave nobody behind. How do you think you get that? You have the mind. You have the heart. Now you're thinking and doing what our master has done. See, that, that, that flesh and that emotion and feeling, when you think you have something and God revealed to you, wait a minute. You put these people before me. And because of that, you feel it. It's like, oh, I'm aching, man. I can't talk to my brother. I can't talk to my sister. You know, me and my boys, man, we was boys, and now they don't even come around. God is separate, set apart. That's what set apart means. God is trying to get this stuff out of you. You know why? That's the purging. That's your purification. But what about the sanctification? When God is sanctifying you, Daily. Why? Raise you up. Raise you up for the day-to-day -day task. You're already in heaven. You're just not there yet. But there's work to be done. This is what Paul was facing in the church of Corinth. He was being challenged. Now in verse, in, in, in chapter 10 of 2 Corinthians, Paul was being challenged about his apostleship. Challenged. Now, we already know about Paul on that road to Damascus. Who didn't know Paul? What did Ananias say? Lord, you know this man. He persecuted the church. Lord said, don't worry about that. I already got it. I just need for you to go ahead and baptize. This is in Acts 9. So, we can't get in our mind and, and quit using this craftiness and subtlety of sin with God's word and tell and I get in, uh, to the point to where I'm saying well in, 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 in my ignorance and lack of knowledge I used to say this stuff say this stuff oh you know I want to be like Paul oh I'm a Barnabas oh but my Peter well, don't you understand when we say stuff like that do you know you're denying the faith you're denying the one that saved you just think about that for a second that's why I said it last week. My hero, my role model is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Why? I'm freeing him. I'm living it with man. Well, see, you beside yourself, man. You don't want to be. Heavens, no. Now, we'll, we'll say the opposite. We'll say hell, no. But <laughs> heavens, no. Heavens, no. Why? You know why I'm saying heavens, no? This is the one that conquered sin. Are you kidding me? Wait a minute, I want to learn from him. Because if I learn from him, guess what? I'm free. I'm not limited. Man is limited. God is not. So for that reason, all in with Christ. Whatever God wants to do and whatever God wants to say to me, he had free will to do. Why? He's my father. He's my master. And now my comforter, teacher, and helper. Try him. And this is what we've obtained, church. Church, this is what we've obtained. 
Why are we being deceived by the enemy, by the crafting and the subtlety of sin? Half true. Don't you know, we'll preach, we'll say this. You was brought with the price. You're not your own. And then in that same mouth, we'll say, my church. Huh? Well, hold up. Uh, uh, your church? Well, see, God raised me to do this ministry. Paul never talked about his church. He always talked about the church, which is Christ. He's the head, the cornerstone that we should be building off of. Paul don't even have his own authority. He didn't have it in, 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 in his darkness, and he don't have it in the light. Because let me tell you, Paul had to go get ladders to persecute. Who do you think was the authority behind that? Satan was. Who do you think was the authority to even persecute Jesus? Satan was. Church, please, 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 please. There's only two. And you're going to listen to one of them. That's God and Satan. You honestly think the devil got you so blind up, you'll say, I can't. Okay, I can. Go back to Isaiah. He said, I will. And his butt was kicked out of heaven like for flesh of light, like the Lord told us. You want to be in the hand of God that way? I don't think so. So Paul was doing this very thing that Jesus did himself. We pick up in verse 7. Do you look at things according to the outward appearance? If anyone is convinced in himself that he is Christ, let him again consider this in himself, that just as he is Christ, even so we are Christ. All Paul was doing if you go back to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1.12, this is what you've heard me heard uh, spoken. If we go back, 1 Corinthians 1.12, this is the part where the church was trying to make divisions between Apollos, Peter, and Paul. This is what they said. They said that now I say this, that each of you say, I am of Paul, I am of Paulus, I am, C I am of Cephas, or I am Christ. Is Christ divided? What Paul was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? So this is what I'm saying. If it comes to the point to where this is what we're talking about, if this is what we're talking about, and this is the word, how in the world are we coming to look on the outside and we're not seeing what goes on in the inside? So, again, as we, as we say, as we say this, and as we hear this, are we still doing the same thing that they did back then? Are we still not learning? The Bible is clear. If we need help, if we need wisdom, God clearly told us in James 1, if we lack wisdom, ask. If wisdom comes from above, which it does, it comes down from the Father of light. Earthly wisdom is sensual. It's demonic. It's going to mislead you. So we need the wisdom of God. And we know what 2 Corinthians 5.17 says. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. To jump ahead, uh, which we will be going over later, 2 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 11, verse 14. Now, let me tell you. If the word cannot do what it says is due, then there's no hope. So there's no way I can tell you or stand up here and say, in Jesus' name. See, this is the one thing. We have become complacent and lazy. Mm -hmm. When truth is there. I share this with a, 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 a dear... I'll share this with anybody. 
God give you, because we say platform. There is no platform. Don't you know when you have a platform that's deceptive? If God give you a platform, where did he say platform here? See, we want to use verbiage. Now, I said verbiage before and got blasted. Well, wait a minute. If I am to say what the word said, why am I putting something on that's not in the word? It doesn't add, register here. So when God gives you the sermon and insight and you speak truth and you're not used to hearing the truth, the first thing you're going to say, you're attacking me. You see how the enemy lock you up? Yeah. So if the enemy lock you up when you're hearing the truth, guess what? Gotcha. Because mm -hmm. this is what he do. Those that are fishing, and you've heard me say this before, if you're a fisherman, you have to go there. But you plan ahead, right? Mm -hmm. You have your bait. You don't have just one bait. You have multiple bait because you got to, you want to catch some fish, right? Mm -hmm. So you get there, and you'll try this bait. Oh, that ain't working. Let me try something else. Now, sometimes you just don't catch, and that's okay. But what about when you're cooking? If you don't have all the proper ingredients, whatever you're cooking is not going to come out. Now, it's going to cook now, mm -hmm. but it may not taste of the taste you require. Yeah. Now, guess what? Yeah. I will make you fisher of men. Mm -hmm. yeah. When he tells you to cast, you're going to catch. I will prepare for you. Didn't he prepare a fish? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the scripture didn't say Jesus fish, but he was on the sea. He was on the seaside, sea broiling fish. Well, wait a minute. How did he get the fish? Well, there you go, Pastor. See, that was Jesus. Well, wait a minute. Why are you trying to separate yourself from him? Jesus said, "Do what I've done." Yeah. yeah. See, we so mesmerized of the miracles and healing. Well, heal in the name of Jesus. That, boy, that's you. <laughs> Come on now. And if you do not lay to lay hands, that's why he said, don't lay hands suddenly on people. You got to have discernment and wisdom. Come on. If he tell me to pray, yeah. if anyone want to sit among you, James now, mm -hmm. let him call for the elders of the church. Let him, him anoint him. If sin is in him, around him, they will be forgiven. The effectual See, we say it, the effectual verbal prayer. Only thing we are emphasizing, verbal prayer. <laughs> effective is that effectual. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Do you know what that effectual is? That's your in tune with God. You all in. But now, if you don't have direct access to him through that mediator, our, yeah. emphasis, our, our intercessor, Christ, <laughs> pray all day. You'll see that symptom get worse. Yeah. Because now... You trying to be the doctor. Mm -hmm. That's why when you go to these hospitals, you, you when I say check them, listen to their report. Who's got the final report? We have a, we say that I got the great position. I'm healed. And this is what you do. Now, faith is an action word. You walk by faith and not by sight. So if I'm hearing it, well, uh, sir, ma'am, the cancer. It's, uh, it's in your liver, and we got to do chemo, we got to do radiation, and we got to do the MRI to see how big. Give you all these terminologies and verbiage. I said verbiage, that's right. Uh, when they say that, you go to the word. You go to the great physician. Now, this is what you say. Lord, if it's your will, you're going to carry me through. All right. Now, Lord, by your stripes, you said I was healed. Now, because you said, mm -hmm. I'm going to give this back to you. Yeah. Lord, the cancer's yours. All right. yeah. Now, when I give that back to the Lord, yeah. and the Lord is faithful now, I said faithful. If that is his permissive will, God will strengthen you, and you may, you may, he may call you home in that state. But guess what? You'll walk out looking healthy right. and not sick. Now, if God chose in his permissive will, because he knows he's the author and the finisher of your faith. He knows all your suffering and trial you can go through from the time you was born till you get there. He knows that already. See, if I start to think of my father that way, what problems do I have? What affliction would it come? He knew it before I did. So if I give it to him, 
And just, just a little bit, because my story's a little long, when it happened, you won't have people concerned and worried, but I need somebody that's going to be effectual. All right. Because if I have effectual people praying on my behalf, God going to raise me up. Amen. Even at the point of death, yeah. which I faced, Psalm 23 mm -hmm. came straight in my spirit and in my mind. Mm -hmm. Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Lord, if it's your will that you're calling me home, I win. Lord, if it's your will that I remain, I win. All right. Why? Because the Lord has a purpose for me. And his will is to do what I'm standing here doing now. It is the Lord. Amen. The, this body that's already, this flesh now, I am not talking about my spirit. My flesh is already judged. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the cave dying every single day. You know how I know that? We tease about this, but you have to, the, our verbiage again, if we're not paying attention, we really are being deceived. If this body is dying every day, now I don't know if, I don't know if anything that's dying is just going to be lively. It's death. You're dying. Even though it's a slow death, you're dying to live. Not, not living to die. See, those that don't know, they're living to die to die again. Mm -hmm. But those of us that do know, we're dying to live. Yeah. That, that, oh, hold up. Wait a minute. You're trying to tell me I'm already going to die? But then when I die, I'm going to die again? Well, no. Give me the, I want the opposite. And the only way you can reverse that is through Christ. Yeah. And again, you say, well, Pastor, what this got to do with the mess? Everything. This man was being challenged. And it was Satan behind this. See, this is the one thing that we have got to understand. We say the things about Satan, but we'll ignore it. Mm. We'll flat out ignore it. Because guess what? When we, walk, when we roll up in the church, when we roll up in the house, now we cock it. Yeah, I'm strong. But soon as the mess is over with, yeah, you get to walk, walk on upside your head. And then all, all day you say, well, you know, the message said this as if we're not even a part. What in the world is going on? See, this is the thing that Paul was warning the faithful people in Corinth. He was being challenged for who he was. Now you tell me, God done, done carved this road for, for, for Paul. He done carved this road for you. And the one thing, I'm from the farm. I was in the field. I can tell you from day one, bail and hate, it doesn't matter. When you on that road, that's your road. You can look around everybody else. It can be 50 people out there. You can look 25 left, 25 right. Everybody is going to that end. And you have got to hold that road. And the one thing you have to do, you have to weed out. Well, Pastor, I don't know nothing about no cotton field. Okay. You don't know nothing about no cotton field, but I'll tell you what, you know when you're being attacked. Amen. Mess around and live right. Oh, she thinks she all that. Look at him. He just thinks he's so spiritual. Hold on, weeds out with the word now. See, you have a weapon. You have the armor. Your weapon is two things. Prayer and word. <laughs> when you see, when you're effectual, God's going to give you discernment. And that's how you help. So, again, as he's being attacked, and we, we, we continue. 11 and 14 of 2 Corinthians, which we will go over later. And no wonder, for Satan himself transformed himself into an angel of light. It is the enemy behind this. And if we're not paying attention to his crafty and wickedness, his cunning and subtlety, you are going to fall every single time. 
we have got to understand he that roaring. See, we just talk about when we say roaring, we we, we think of Satan this way. Roar, roar. No, he's talking. He's not trying to imitate. If he's trying to be anti-Christ and God in Christ is speaking, Satan is going to speak. He's going to speak, church. And we are listening to this mess. And that's what's getting us. We get sidetracked. And we have got to... Okay. One other thing. Quit looking at folk. <laughs> Quit calling folk names. Once you hear and you know your spirit is not true, come back with truth. You try to help them. And helping them is not telling you, now, girl, you just need to quit that. How in the world is helping somebody? Well, man, the only thing you got to do now, if, if, if you do this to them, then this is how, that's manipulation. Do what the words say. Exhort. Quicken with the word. If you're sharper than a two-edged sword, if you don't know, there's something familiar to you. you got enough word in you. And when I say you got enough word in you, you have a Bible in you. If you got the Holy Spirit, the Bible is in you from Genesis to Revelation. You may not be able to articulate it well, but if you stay on that path, God will help you. And he will teach you that it will come out. Because the thing of it is, is when I'm hearing it, if I'm hearing it and it's not lining up, your spirit, the Holy Spirit, is going to say, here. Go here. Go here. You may not be able to quote it, but if you got your Bible with you, see, that's why you got to be, it's imperative. You meditate on God's word. You know God's word. Because when these, these subjects and these issues come up, then when you know the enemy's trying to mess with you and you don't realize it, well, you know what you do? You give it an opinion. Where's opinion? You're a believer. There's no opinion. There's truth. And the word is truth. You said no to the word, and the word shall make you free. Now, if we free and free indeed, what our language should be, what our purpose should be, the word. Because now when I give you the word, you know what is happening? God is in the midst of it. Church, he's in the midst of it. And when he's in the midst of it, who you think going to increase? God is. See, we have put it to the point of when we say, well, you're being you. And, and, and the one thing that we don't want God to do is we don't want God to control us. Mm. See, when you don't want God to control you, who do you think controlling you? Mm. I'll say again, there's only two. And you're going to be in one of these worlds now. You're going to be reigning in heaven forever, peacefully, no more sin, no more sickness, or you're going to be in torment forever. There's no in-between. That in between is the mediator that's trying to get you to wake up right now. You got to wake up right now. Because if you're not waking up right now, destruction is headed for you. And that destruction is not the way to go. Because that's eternity there. Don't die in your sin. Why? Because the conqueror has conquered them. It's a warning. And this is so relevant today. You heard me say last week. Heaven, heaven does not close. What in the world are we doing? Why are you closing these church doors? Well, you have to obey the land. We finna get to this authority. God is the ultimate authority. He created everything. Show me in scripture where he told you to close the church. Show me. Show me where he told you to do Zoom, Facebook Live. Show me. I've heard messages on the title of Facebook, and it came out of the book of Revelation. Well, see, we talk about technology, but now we're subject to technology? What's going on? The adversary is messing with you. Get back into this church and preach like heaven is right now. Because we don't have no sense of urgency. Well, I can do it the privacy in my home, and me and God, he had to talk to me on the hey. Come on now. He said, we're two or three together. But then when you talk true now, oh, all hell from the break loose. 
But see, I'm not afraid of hell. Because you know what? Oh, heaven done broke loose. Because see, God's word don't return to them void. Now, if you are a child of God, at some point, you're talking about protest, black lives matter. No, souls matter. Right. Let's get this thing right. And see, if souls matter, you're going to protest. You're going to be at that White House. We need church. We need Jesus. That's what matters. He is life. Yeah. Not lives matter. Singling a race out. Are you kidding me? When he died for the world? Well, see, there you go. You just thinking that, and now you don't even act like you're black. Well, let me tell you something. I'm not. I got the blood of Jesus. And because I got the blood of Jesus and his blood runs through my body? Are you kidding me? I'm not fleshly. A spirit. My flesh is done. It's going through. What do you think? Crucify your flesh and take up the cross. What do you think it means? If Jesus saw color, he'd have forgot about the Gentiles. I'm all about the Jews. But God so loved the world. My DNA is God the Father. Because that DNA right there transferred to his son. See, his son wrapped himself in flesh so he could bleed, so we could be connected. See, that's that seed right there. He didn't have to impregnate nobody. But the only way he could come through is he had to come through the birth. And when he chose that virgin and, and formed himself in her womb, and Joseph couldn't touch him, Touch her until after. See, faith. A godly man. Did he listen? Mm -hmm. See, the problem is we don't want to listen. We don't want to listen. See, true now. We're talking and we're talking about this story. Well, your story got an end. What story that you know that don't have an end to it? This is life. Everlasting. And what are you talking about? Well, when I get there, well, let me tell you, well, when you get there, your butt don't work. God created you to serve him. Keep on thinking you're going to be reigning as kings and doing nothing. I don't see nowhere in here All right. where you're not doing something. When he said he'll make you rule over men, let me tell you something. Do a ruler have an assignment? Do a ruler work? <laughs> Keep on thinking you're going to say, well, I'm just going to check them out, check them out, check them out. Okay, all right. You're being deceived. If Jesus now, Jesus said, I'm going to go back and prepare a place. Prepare? Prepare what? In my father's house, there's many matches. Oh, what? See, this is the thing. This is the one thing that Satan has gotten to believers. If I just speak it, if I just speak it, speak it in the atmosphere, speak it. Well, guess what? You can speak it all you want to, but if it's not lying with your butt doing it, you can forget it. You're like a sinner. <laughs> Ain't nothing gonna happen. God don't even hear it. Cause he's trying to, hey, 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 hey. Listen, do what I've asked you to do. If you do what I ask you to do, see, don't I pull you out a blessing that you won't have room for. Because see, when you're all in and you're doing it that way, guess what? You can see clearly now. You can deal with your adversary. Now, I didn't say folk. I said your adversary. See, when you're dealing with your adversary, you are in a spiritual fight. Remember now, we say this. Back in the day, back in the day, let somebody cross you and say something. First thing you do, let them keep on talking to you. See, let me tell you something about fighting. There's two things for the fight. You got somebody just, just not going to take it, 
or to you know, drive them to the point to where they're going to literally try to kill you. They ain't going to knock you out. They're going to try to kill you. Or you got somebody that's so fearful, say, if I don't get to lick in here first, they may whoop me. Now, the whole time, now let me tell you something. And why you are this spiritual fight. See, in the flesh, I don't care what you say. Your heart is beating a thousand beats a minute. You know why? You scared. <laughs> you just straight up scared. I don't care what you tell me. See, we get cocky when we in a, a physical fight and we win. Man, I just I laid it on it. I put I, I, I put it on it. That's what we do. We'll have a little bounce in our step. That's what we'll do. And 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 and, and, and a female. Oh, I got drag it home. That's what we say. This is a flesh in now. That ain't scripture, but a flesh and talk is flesh and talk now. I drag that beat. Yeah, that's what we say. But now when it comes to the spirit, when it comes to the spirit, when we don't have the understanding, yeah. we'll use that same verbiage. Yeah. Now you really think, now this is what you don't do. You don't bounce around, you don't do this. You don't do that. Or you don't say, you, you don't do that. Do you know what you do? <laughs> they think they something. I can do something better than her. <sighs> Pastor just think he know everything. That's what you, you know what you're doing? That woman, she's still pulling that hair. That man, he's like, yeah. that's what you're doing. But see, if you don't catch it, if you don't catch it now, this is what comes out of your mouth. This is not what it says. Authority is from above. Right. The authority that Paul had was from Christ. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Verse 9. I'm sorry, verse 8, verse 8 and 9. <clears throat> For even if I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the Lord gave us for edification and not for your destruction, I shall not be ashamed, lest I seem to terrify you by letter, letters. For his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak, and his speech is contemptible. Now, if you don't pay attention to this, you think Paul is talking to the church of Corinth. This is a straight-up warning. They got naysayers about this letter. See how he write this? He talked big, bad, and bold when he's not in your presence. But, but, but when he's in your presence, then he act like he don't know. This is what they are saying. And because of that, because of that now, now, now remember now, God assigned Paul to plant churches. Now, as I say that, that was in Paul's time and era in the Lord. Again, he resides in heaven now. You think God is just going to say, well, I'm done with my apostles and we're just going to wait and see everything. No, God is still trying to get to you. Yeah. God is still trying to get to you. You have a work to do. Come on. You have a work to do and you do not have time for this foolishness. Now you don't because time is essence and is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is now. And I can't wait till I get 65 when I did all I wanted to do is say, well, Lord, here I am. Yeah, right. It ain't that the Lord can still use you, but look what you missed out on. Why do you think your works is going to be destroyed and others are going to be given? You don't think that the work the Lord has for the unsaved folk that's going to, going to hell, God don't keep his own rewards. Come you know what? At some point, we have got to understand. Why in the world am I saying I believe, but yet won't follow? It doesn't register. Why is it when God has put a desire in someone else's heart and raised them up in a qualification of a pastor teacher, we get beside ourselves. You, you, you can't do this. Excuse me? When he told them to go back, did all 12 remain or did they scatter? When they scattered to reach the world, then were they not still in fellowship? Yes, they were. Anytime 
They was all together when Paul came from the three years of teaching. And when he got back to Jerusalem, all the brethren was together. Mm -hmm. They prayed. Now the Spirit, not them, the Spirit said, send me Paul and Barnabas. And the scripture clearly tells us in the book of Acts, they wept yeah. and embraced. But they was excited. Because then the gospel and the kingdom and the church exploded. This time in this pandemic is the time for the church to explode. Yeah. But if we not seeing this stuff, what we do, we become selfish and self-righteous. See, you done this. See, you done that. You know what you just did? This is what you just did. Because you made it about yourself. But see, when God set you apart, and when you start to understand, I don't have to justify what God is doing in my life. Because the word keeps me justified. Because as I understand the word and believe the word and the just shall live by faith, my faith is going to increase in him. Because he is the word. But if I'm not seeing his stuff, all of a sudden, see, I can't believe they did this. They don't even call me. They don't even come around. Well, guess what? I have direct access to only no technology. Father, hey, Father, I need it. I need you right now. Father, I didn't see it, but you knew about it. Help me. Mend my heart, God. Help me. This set apart, Lord, it, 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 it looked like it's lonely, but you said you'll never leave or forsake me. If I'm giving God back his word and I'm communing with his dialogue, what do you think God's going to do? He opened up Adam, didn't he? And he sold him back up. There was no scar. See, suffering doesn't mean you suffer of what Christ has done. Your suffering is going to be like Christ. You may not be nailed on the cross or whip. You may not be stoned. But the fact that you're in a world that's going to perish and already judge, you really think you're going to escape without any marks? Really? See, the enemy... The enemy know you're not finna go out the world. He know you're not you're not finna go out to no nightclub, juke joint, or uh, bars and stuff. He know you're not gonna do that. Where do you think he gonna try to mess with you at? In the house. He gonna mess with you in the house. He gonna mess with you in the church. Did he leave Jesus alone? If Satan didn't leave Jesus alone, what makes you think he gonna leave you alone? All the way up to the cross. Crucify him, crucify him. See, we say the folk. Really? How can we say the folk when the scripture clearly tells us, had they known? Mm -hmm. Who is they? He they talking about the kingdom of darkness. Really? <laughs> and we say, and we want to tag folk name. Wait a minute. If they name written in the land book of life, they're your brother and sister, and they suffer just like you. See, if, if I take my authority and try to say God gave it to me, don't you know that's foolishness? That's darkness? Because remember now, it's two. If, if, just like Paul did, he exercised the authority. He exercised the authority that God has given him, and he gave it back to him. Now, let's go over some of this. Matthew, we're going to be in Matthew for just, just a second. Matthew 7, 29. Oh. <clears throat> For, for he taught them as one that's having the authority. Now, if, uh, if we go back up to, let's just say, 20, 28. Now, this is the time where uh, Jesus had told his disciples, if they're following him and they do what he says. He says, and so it was that Jesus had ended this saying that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having the authority as not as a scribe. So, <clears throat> Matthew 7, 28, 29. Now, when he talked to the multitude along with his disciples, they picked up on it that this speech is not the same. We know the scribes and the Pharisees speech, but he's speaking with one that's have authority. Now, how did they pick that up? 
You see how when we are tuned with God and we're familiar with God, when we speak in truth to us, how we can pick up discernment of what God is saying to us? These are the things that we, spiritual ears now, he who has the ear, let him hear. See, when we say these things, we talk as if we're saying it. No. If the Holy Spirit is in us and he's our teacher, as he speaks truth, we should be responding to God, not pastor. Now, when I'm saying not responding to pastor, God has placed pastors in the position of where he is to exhort and empower the people in his word. Now, now I need you to understand that. Now, because I said that, and you have a lot of naysayers, well, see, what do I need a pastor for? You need a pastor. Because Jesus is the shepherd, and Jesus is not going to leave you where you're not fed. See, there's no way around that cunning and craftiness. It's going to, sin is going to be exposed every time. But light exposes sin, and he's the light of the world, and the word. It's the word. If the word cuts now, we need to be talking about the word. I don't listen. The authority that God has given me, God has given me the authority to exhort and empower. If I am saying anything outside of that, for the love of God, please, 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 I'm begging you, hold me accountable. Get me back where I need to be in the Lord now. That does not give no one room to dictate and tell you what to do. That's what's going on today. People are running pastors. You cannot do that. You do not have that kind of authority. Because look what the verbs we use. Show me in the scripture where there's organization in the church. When Christ is the builder. Where? Oh, we got to find us a pastor. Wait a minute. Jesus is your pastor. Let him lead you to the person. And then when he gives you the person, why are you still acting foolish? Really? See, you see how the enemy locked you up. You pray and God give you what you ask for. And when you get there, you're like, well, he trying to talk like this. Why are, you, why are your mouth contorting? You know, where that coming from? See, you think you're in control. And he's just like this. You little puff. Say this. Wait a minute. Say that. Yeah. You need to see what's really going on. You're a puppet on the string. We don't act right. Fold your arms. Do that. <laughs> Do it. Because you ain't listening. <coughs> See, it may sound funny, but I'm, I, I'm hurting. Are you kidding me? You're locked up. You're free in Christ. Really? Come on. You said it. If you say you believe, we should be rejoicing. Having fellowship where God can break grounds of where we haven't been. But the foolishness, the foolishness that we get caught up in. We get sidetracked when he clearly talked with authority. Matthew 28. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Now, wait a minute. Heaven and earth? All authority? And you in Christ? See, you, you see why it's not your authority? You in Christ. It's Christ's authority. That authority is going to exercise what it says it's going to do. You know why? He's in you. That's what the abiding come in. If you abide in me and I in you, you can do all things. But outside of me, you can do nothing. Now guess what? If Christ said outside of him, do you know how you get outside of him? Start talking that foolish talk that the devil done told you to talk. That's outside of Christ. But long as you remain and you speak, oh, it's going to happen. Because his word don't return void. You see how the thing coming back to the word? Belief in his word? If this is where we are, if this is where we are, quit panicking over COVID. God got COVID. God is trying to get you. Yeah. Wake up. Wake up. Because I'll tell you again and again, in Jesus' name,
pastors, please, 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 open up your church for the love of God, please. Open it up. Do not let the devil tell you anything else. When we clearly says in Hebrews, don't sink yourself for the assembly. Well, we see each other on Facebook. There ain't no contact. Tell me this. What technology are you going to have in heaven? You're going to see eye to eye, face to face. And here it is. Well, you know, the president said this. Okay. Let's keep going here. Almost. Oh, we, we ain't going to get through it all. But the essential ones. Mark 1. Mark 1, chapter, chapter 1, verses 24. Oh, no, 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 hold on. Well, we'll come back to Mark. Let's go to, um, now this is one way where authority can be abused, but in a righteous way, not a wrong way. Genesis 16 and 6. Genesis 16 and 6. So Abram said to Sarah, Indeed your maidservant is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Sarah dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. Now, if you can remember, God already promised Abraham and Sarah that Isaac was going to be the seed. But because they didn't listen, and they listened to the adversary and not God, because Sarah lied. When God talked to Abraham, he was 90, and uh, she was 80. 10 years, you're going to have a son. When, when this happened, well, I won't put numbers on it. When God told Abraham and Sarah that if they was going to conceive and have a child, Sarah laughed. When God was done with Abraham, he said, Sarah, why'd you laugh? I didn't laugh. You're lying. Okay. Sarah, it's going to happen. After God finished talking to Sarah, what did she do? Ah, uh, honey, Abraham, go, go ahead, God. Well, we're too old. She's young. Ishmael. Ishmael now. Ishmael was born. And by the time of age of 13, he's mocking Isaac. So Sarah got upset. Send him out. So when they send him out, when she sent him, sent her out, God cannot, sin cannot reside in God's sight. This is what I'm trying to say. See, Satan, see, Sarah didn't have the authority. God gave Sarah the authority. See, we want to make this thing, and this is what we do. We say it has to be personal. That's true in the Lord, not personal with you. That's where the enemy getting us. See, see, women, you have to be like Sarah. Don't let these women come around. That's not what that means. Listen, if it's God's authority, God always don't rightly divide it. 
And the union that we have in Christ, the union that we have in Christ is always going to be one. It's never got, it's not going to ever be about you. You know when it's about you? Your walk and your relationship with him. But if you remain in him, then you're connected with the body. Are you, are you following? Are you following? Because outside of him now, we can't do nothing. But if we remain in him, we can do all things. Amen? Mm -hmm. Okay, so even in the Old Testament, God was showing his authority. And then Ephesians. Ephesians 6, 9. And you, masters, do the same things to them, giving up threatening, knowing that your own master also is in heaven. And there is no partiality with him. Now, O oh Lord, Lord, help us, help us, please. If I exhort authority over you, or what I want, that's my authority. The authority should always be in a reverential fear of the Lord. If you are trying to say, Pastor, think he's running stuff. Pastor won't let me let us do this. If I'm saying that, if you're saying that about me, God is not speaking. Because God authority is always going to cause you to reverence him, not the pastor. We just read in Matthew, right? Jesus said all authority has been given to him. What did he say, man? What, we, what, what authority do we think we have? It's through Christ. And this is what Paul was talking about here in verse 8 and 9. It was his authority. Christ's authority, not Paul's authority. Mm -hmm. And because of that, that's why they had naysayers. Don't you know, you want to you know what a busybody and a naysayer is? Folk that come up to you after service. Because, see, you watching, but you're not watching. Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor? You'll sit there and you'll watch, and you may see somebody. That's almost like a distraction to you if you see it. And the first thing you do now, you're paying attention. You're like, amen, hallelujah. And then you see somebody. Even if you're in the poor pit, you go, now, wait a minute. He's a minister. He's falling asleep. Wait a minute. Why, why, why is she on the phone? Hmm. Who do you think that's coming from? See, he wants to distract you from hearing the word. If faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. Now, well, I'm not going to minimize this. If there's a medical condition, we need to pray. If you, now, 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 I'll say it and say it again. Because we was once there. Your flesh get excited. You know what people are concerned about now? It's football season. Are we going to have football season? Oh, we got to talk about this. They're looking at the watch. Couple, in another month, they're going to look at the watch. Because I got to get, I got to watch Cabo, I got to watch Saints. But wait a minute. There's not going to be no NFL in heaven. So what's really going on? I'm not speaking bad about football. That's entertainment. For the enjoyment. That's a blessing. But that's not life. So, when we get back to the basis, or the basic, are we paying attention to what's really going on? Are we submitting to Christ's authority? Challenge me, please. If God is not the authority in this ministry or over me, by all means, let me know. Don't want to do anything outside of God. Don't want to do anything outside of Christ. If I'm abiding and you hearing truth and God is talking to you, then God is communing with us. He's the authority. And for that reason, Although we didn't get through it all, because there's a lot. If you've heard the gospel today, 
please, 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 do not let this opportunity go by without receiving Christ. If you are a part of a ministry and your church is still meeting virtual, get to your pastor and plead with him. If, even if you don't want to go, open it up for me so I can intercede. Don't fall into this ensnarement. Oh, you can do it at the house. You can pray anywhere. That's a lie from the devil because we have got to come together as the body to touch and agree. I didn't get to the binding part. That was not just for Peter. If it's all authority and we're coming together and we're going to bind COVID, when we come to get the key to this is one in Christ together. If we are going to stay locked behind closed doors, all that is is darkness. Darkness when we are in the light. So please, please, please open them up. Continue to spread the gospel. Live this life in Christ. Our ultimate sacrifice, our ultimate authority that we can remain in the liberty that we have in Christ. God bless.